Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The aim of this work is to provide a contribution in the understanding of the mechanism which uh, influenced the determination of maximum crop weight in reinforced concrete ties and, in general, in reinforced concrete structure. And uh, basically the aim of this work is to understand if a model exclusively based on bone slip is able or not to currently predict maximum crop width or if the contribution of stress diffusion in concrete cover should be taken into account. So uh, a 1D numerical range model exclusively based on bone slip behavior between seal and concrete and on plane section hypothesis has been developed. And the main feature of this model are the possibility to include the effect of bone deterioration near transverse crack, as well as the possibility to be easily extended to different types of reinforcement other than the classical metallic one, for example, FRP reinforcement, by simply modifying the bond slip low at this parameter. And then the proposed model has been validated through comparison with significant experimental tests taken from literature. So, despite the large number of studies carried out in the past on, the to on this topic, a lack of a unique formulation for predicting maximum crack weight and spacing uh, is proved by the development of more than 20 formulae, as, the, as those reported in the right part of the slide, to predict, to predict this variable. And uh, except for those relations which are based on empirical approaches, uh, the most of the relations are based on two internal mechanisms that are the diffusion of stresses in concrete cover and the bond slip behavior between seal and concrete. In the first case, maximum crack weight is generally correlated to the concrete cover depth, while in the second one, uh, the maximum crack weight is usually related to the ratio between the rebar diameter and the reinforcing ratio. But however, it's not clear uh, which of these two contributions is more important. So, um, when we consider our reinforced concrete tension ties, it is subjected to a uniform state of stress. So, the, first, the formation of the first crack is a random event, which also influences the subsequent uh, development of crack pattern. And to take into account the uncertainty of this uh, process, uh, the proposed model takes into account configuration which delimits all possible crack pattern for a given value of the applied load. These two limit configuration are the incipient cracking condition and the condition which take place immediately after cracking. In the first case, the attention is focused on a tension ties block with length equal to two times the transmission length, which is the length uh, over which slip occurs between the two materials, steel and concrete. And in this case, the stresses in concrete equals the maximum tensile strength of the material in the middle of the block. While immediately after cracking, it is assumed that a crack forms exactly in the middle of the previous block, so um, two blocks, uh, each one of length equal to the transmission length, which is also equal to the minimum crack spacing form, and in each of them, the maximum um, stress in concrete is lower than the tensile strength. And uh, crack width is defined as twice the slips that occurs at the block ends, the end of the block. And so um, the model assumes that slip occurs between the reinforcement bar and concrete. So the slip is defined as the difference between the displacement of the two of two points that were originally in contact belonging to the two materials. And this slip causes the presence of tangential stresses, which are the bond stresses, which are related to slip by means of a suitable bond slip relation. The model assumes that the problem is governed by the three classic differential equations of bond that are compatibility condition, equilibrium of the reinforcing bar, and equilibrium of the old cross section. Uh, as regards the constitutive um, laws assumed for materials, the river is assumed to have a linear elastic behavior since the problem of the determination of maximum crack width is relevant for serviceability verification. And also, concrete intention is assumed to have a linear elastic behavior until the attainment of the tensile strength. And then, after crack formation, quasi stresses across crack surfaces are neglected for sake of simplicity. The interaction between river and concrete is modeled by means of the classic model code 2010 bond slip law. 
and the model also allows the possibility to include the presence of a boundary ratio zone near transfer cracks due to the splitting and crushing of concrete around the bar beside the crack. And this effect is taken into account by reducing the maximum bond stress by a damage factor for those parts of the, of the reinforcement at a distance lower than two times the reinforcing bar from a crack. So the previous defined differential equation are solved by means of a MATLAB routine which is based on the, of the collocation method and uh, it is necessary to define the boundary condition for the two limit, consider for the two limit conditions uh, previously defined. So in the incipient cracking condition, the boundary condition at the end of the member are relative to the state of stress in the materials while in the middle section of the block, uh, slip is equal to zero and the tensile stress in concrete is equal to the tensile strength of the material. So this is a particular boundary value problem where the unknown is represented by the length of the tensile block and consequently by the transmission length. And uh, the problem is solved by means of a trial and error procedure based on the Brand's method. While the second limit configuration, the same boundary condition at the ends of the member as before occurs, but in this case they are referred to a shorter interval ranging from zero to the transmission length, and in the middle section of the block only the condition relative to slip occurs while in this case the maximum tensile stress in concrete is unknown and it is lower than the tensile strength of the material. So it is still a boundary value problem, but it's in this case the transmission length is defined since it has been previously calculated from in the, in the first limit condition. The model has been validated through comparison with significant data, first uh, on reinforced concrete ties, and uh, these uh, three specimens have been considered taken from two different experimental campaigns. First comparison are provided in the lower part of the slide in terms of global behavior, so total axial load applied versus average steel strain. And it can be observed that experimental data are bounded uh, between the two curves from the two curves uh, obtained with range model uh, corresponding to minimum and maximum crack spacing. And it can be also observed that two numerical curves are plotted uh, considering or not the presence of a bond deterioration zone. And it can be noticed that uh, um, this, um, this parameter does not have any significant influence on the global behavior. On the contrary, its influence is much more marked on the um, estimate of maximum crack width. Uh, indeed, uh, in, this, uh, in, the uh, in the left part of the slide, the, the crack width is reported as a function of the applied axial load and it can be seen that the range model corresponding to uh, maximum crack space and so to the incipient cracking condition is able to correctly catch maximum crack width and uh, this prediction can be enhanced by considering the presence of a bond deterioration zone. While on the contrary, the model is not able to correctly catch minimum crack width and um, a lower bound of the experimental data can be obtained by performing an analysis considering the perfect bond between the materials, so uh, neglecting any kind of um, failure, internal failure, and maximizing the effect of stress, uh, the, of stress diffusion in concrete cover. But this is not very important since the aim of the work is to have a current prediction of maximum crack width which should be used to perform serviceability verification for the structural member and the, the model is able to correctly predict this, uh, this value. While in the right part of the slide, the, a, a comparison between numerical and experimental results and carried out in terms of uh, crack spacing and it is uh, um, clear that the, the average uh, experimental crack spacing is uh, included between the two numerical curve while perfect bond solution provides an underestimation of the experimental results. And uh, also comparisons are made with the uh, 
Classical Design Code Digital Model Code 2010 and ACI 224, uh, which have been chosen since they are based on completely different assumptions. Since the expression of model code relates maximum crack width and spacing to two contributions that are uh, concrete cover, uh, that have a distress uh, diffusion concrete cover uh, with this first term KC and uh, to bone slip between the two materials steel and concrete uh, so um, the, the transmission length is related to the ratio between the ripper diameter and the steel ratio uh, but uh, in fact uh, this relation is not linear, is not linear and consequently uh, the application of this relation leads to an overestimation of, mo of both maximum crack width and spacing while ACI to the full relation is based on the theoretical works uh, carried out by Brahms, which neglected any type of slip between the materials and um, thought that um, crack width was only related to the diffusion of stresses in concrete cover. And so maximum crack width is effectively related only to concrete cover DC. But this, uh, the, the, the relation uh, which is um, contained in ACI 224 is of empirical nature since the original relation proposed by Brahms has been uh, subsequently corrected to take into account experimental results on tension ties. However, it should be noted that ACI provision is almost coincident with that obtained uh, by the proposed range model with reference to the maximum crack spacing. And this can be better appreciated with the reference to this graph which shows the maximum crack width as a function of the concrete cover. And both the range model and the ACI provision provide an almost linear relation between maximum crack width and concrete cover even if, if they are based on completely different assumptions. And uh, they provide a good fit of the experimental results. So uh, this, uh, is, it's interesting since uh, the range model does not consider at all the diffusion of stress in concrete cover and um, to have attained a linear relation between maximum crack width and uh, concrete cover is a proof that the so-called concrete cover effect is implicitly taken into account in classic bond theory. Uh, then the model has been also extended to other type of reinforcement like FRP uh, reinforcement and um, to this aim another bond slip law has been adopted in this case the double branch model proposed by Cousins and others has been used uh, but in this case the bond slip parameters are not suggested by any design code but should be calibrated on the basis of available experimental data due to the large variety of materials that are available in the market and also to the different type of surface treatment that can be performed. And as regards the presence of a bonded deterioration zone, um, no more studies are available on this topic and no cause suggestions are available. But some experimental tests on GFRP rivers uh, highlight that uh, um, a, a reduction of the maximum bonds, uh, bond stress uh, um, takes place uh, near the cracks and consequently probably a bond deterioration uh, phenomena uh, occurs. But in this case, uh, numerical analysis has been performed by considering the same model uh, used for steel. Uh, the, um, to, to validate the model, some experimental data have been considered and um, are relative to three tension tests um, tested by Aiello and others with a CFRP river and with different concrete cover. And the same consideration already done for ordinary reinforced concrete ties are still valid in this case. And also in this case, ACI provision are almost superimposed with those obtained by range model, uh, obtaining a quite linear um, trend between maximum crack width and concrete cover. So, concluding, uh, it can be observed that numerical models which are only based on bone slip relation are able to predict correctly, correctly the maximum crack width, providing that a suitable bone slip law is adopted. Uh, announced uh, uh, estimate of maximum crack width can be obtained by considering the presence of a bone deterioration zone near transverse cracks, also in case of FRP reinforcement, but in this case, far too researchers are advisable. And a similar linear trend between maximum crack width and concrete cover has been obtained also with the proposed range model, so this defect of concrete cover is implicit.
implicitly taken into account in classical theory. So thank you for your attention.